Hi everyone, I'm back again with another video. I'm on a bit of a roll. It was my new year resolution to do more videos and to, I'm, I'm aiming to do one a week. So whether I can keep that up, um, probably not, because to be quite honest, the only reason I'm managing to get so many done at the moment is I've got a bit of a gap in between create and craft TV shows. So, but you know, we'll see. I'm going to try and get as many filmed this week while I'm not so busy so that hopefully that will keep me going for a few weeks so yes uh, I'm really hoping I can get you a video a week for, for a little while anyway so today we are going to be making a wrapped journal we're going to be using the wrapped journal die by Eileen Hull that's this one here this came out a couple of years ago now I think and it's a really great journal because it it's got um, on the spine you've got four sort of spines so um, you can put four notebooks in this or if you want to you can create your own signatures to put in it so it's a really nice design so we're going to use that for the journal itself and then we're going to use my current favorite embossing folder as you know I change my favorites quite regularly but at the moment it's this honeycomb frenzy which I just love so we're going to use that for a background and then I've got the winter garland die set this is one by Pete Hughes and if you've been following me a while, you know I'm obsessed with wreaths, so I couldn't wait to have a go with this one. So we're going to use this to put some detail on the front of the journal. And let me show you the journal itself. So I've got the wrapped journal. I haven't put any notebooks in this one yet, um, so it's all blank inside. But once I've got some notebooks in it, this is going to be really, really sturdy. And I just really like this flap design because it, it does give you a nice sturdy journal almost like a box file so it, it's really pretty and it gives you a lot of scope for decorating it because you've got all these panels now i've kept the back and, and the flap that goes under the front fairly plain but i've carried on that honeycomb design throughout and then um, kept my lovely wreath detail and a, and a metal embellishment for the front so i'll switch my camera around and we'll go step by step through how i did this one so to create my journal base, I'm going to use Sizzix Matte Board. This is perfect for this because it's cut to size already and it's white. So it's a great base to start with. And what I'm doing is I've got some double sided adhesive on a roll here. And I'm going to cover this matte board with the double sided tape. So I'm just going to trim all around this to get rid of the excess. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to cover this. Now I'm covering it with white, but I want to have a surface that I can um, add some inks to and things like that. So what I've got is the Sizzix Surfaces Texture Roll. Um, and as I say, I've gone for the white. This, te this texture roll does come in a range of finishes. There's a white, there's a grey and there's a tan. And then in metallics, you've got silver, gold and rose gold. But I really like the white because the texture of it is it, it's quite heavy duty. So this is going to protect my journal. And also I can cut panels from this afterwards, as you'll see. And it's all going to blend in nicely. So now I've stuck that to the die. I'm just going to quickly run that through. If you've got the standard size Big Shot as I'm using here, you do need the extended cutting pads for this particular die. So I've got my journal all ready to go and it's nicely covered in that white texture roll now. So I'm just going to pop those bits out of the centre of the spine and then fold it along all the crease lines and that's going to give me my journal base. But I want to do some embossing on each of those panels so the easiest way to do that is to die cut again without the matte board just some of that white texture roll so I'm going to run um, just some scraps through so that I've got a piece of texture roll for each of the panels so I've got um, texture roll now that's going to cover each part and all I need to do is follow the score lines on this so that I can cut away where the spine is because I'm not going to cover the spine again I'm going to leave that plain I just want a panel for each area so I want one for the front one for the back and then one for that flap that's going to tuck under so it's really simple 
Um, it is quite hard to see when it's white on white, but if you give it a quick fold, you can see as I did there, you can see exactly where the line is to follow, to cut. And that's going to give me three pieces to cover each of those. Now I'm going to use red line tape um, to stick these to the front. You really need to go quite heavy handed with the tape because you, you really want these to be securely stuck because once this is assembled into a journal, um, you really won't want it lifting anywhere. So now I can emboss these with my fabulous honeycomb frenzy. I'm going to give them all a quick spritz of water before I run them through. That's just going to soften the fibres in that um, texture roll a bit so that I'll get a really good emboss. And then I'll quickly run these through. For the 3D folders, you just need your base platform and then one cutting pad on top. So that's the first one. And I'll do the same for the next two. So now I've got all three panels and they've got that lovely honeycomb embossing on. Now I'm going to be really heavy handed with the red line tape now because you really don't want these lifting once they're stuck to the front. Um, you know, if you think about it, this is going to be a journal that might be carried around and I'm going to be adding inks to this. I'm going to be embossing this. So you really do want to make sure this is well and truly stuck down. So I am literally going to cover each panel with this red line tape before I stick them down. And I'll skip forward um, in a second because this does take a while and it's really not very exciting watching me stick down red tape. So I've skipped forward and I'm just on the last panel. I've left this in the video just so you can really see that I have literally covered that with the red tape before I pop down my panel. And hopefully my head won't get in the way now. Yeah, it does a little bit. Um, I needed to get in close, I'm afraid, to make sure that was stuck down and straight. So now my journal is all covered with that fabulous texture and it's ready to start adding some colour. So I'm going to get a bit of colour onto this now. So I've grabbed three different oxide inks. I've got Weathered Wood, Bundled Sage and Speckled Egg. And I'm just smushing a bit of each colour onto my glass mat. And then I'm going to use a wet brush to just add colour here and there. You can see I'm doing it really randomly, quite messily. <laughs> and I just want a little bit of a wash to go on the background, really. I don't want to cover all the white but I do want there to be a sort of colour to this. Um, it's going to be quite subtle because it, it's more of a wash than, than sort of a concentrated colour, but it's going to look really nice in the background once I finish. Now don't forget to do the spines because although there's no embossing on those, you don't want them to be stark white. You want, you want the whole thing to look quite seamless and for them to blend in. So I'm just making sure that I'm covering those as well, just with a wash of colour. So I'll pop that to one side to dry. So that's dry now and I'm going to add some gold wax. This is Pentart um, gold wax that I'm using. I'm just going to put a bit on my glass mat, mainly just because I've got false nails on and uh, it, it's a bit of a nightmare to try and scoop it out of the pot with your nails. And I'm just rubbing it here and there, same as, as when I gave the background a bit of a wash. It's I want it to be quite random. So I'm just working my way across, dabbing bits here and there. And I don't want to go overboard because I don't want it to be too gold. I'm about to put even more gold on this. So um, make sure you don't sort of go too crazy with this. So I can just pop that excess back in the pot ready for next time. So we're moving on now to decorate the front cover. And I've got this fabulous Sizzix Winter Garland die set here. This is a set designed by Pete Hughes. And there are two different wreath um, circles on this set. And I'm using the larger one, which I'm just going to die cut from brown card. I'm slightly off camera here, but I didn't bother moving my machine across just to show this. So I'm die cutting that from a nice dark brown. And that's going to look fabulous um, on the front. So I'll just pop that out of the die. And then I'm going to grab watercolour 
cardstock for the next bit and I'm just using there's this sprig with sort of berries on and then what looks like looks like sort of eucalyptus leaves so I'm going to die cut those two elements twice I'm not quite sure how where I'm going with the layout of this so um, I'm going to die cut a couple of each to start with if I need more I can always cut more so I'll just run that through so I've got two of each to play with and then we can get to colouring those. So I'm just going to grab a sheet of palette paper because um, I don't want to get ink on my mat and I'm avoiding using the glass mat because the glare off of it when I'm filming is quite bad so that's why I've only got one, one corner of it there. So. I'm going to bring back in the same colours so that this all ties together. I'm not going to introduce any other colours in. So I'm just going to use the bundled sage and um, the speckled egg for this. Um, for the euca eucalyptus type leaves here, I'm concentrating more on the green tones. And then I'll use more of the speckled egg on the other elements um, for the berries. I don't want them to look all the same. So as you can see, I'm just really quickly just adding colour on, a bit of water. And then once I've done um, all of that, I will go back in and just add a little bit of blue to the eucalyptus leaves just so that um, there's a bit of variation on those leaves because they're quite large leaves on that one. So I'm just going to clear up and pop those to one side to dry and while those dry I can put my wreath on the front. Now I'm going to have this kind of coming off the edge so I need to make sure I really stick this down firmly so I'm making sure to put dots of glue all over it. I'm using a Gina K Connect glue for this. I really like the nozzle on this um, bottle. And I want it hanging off the edge and then I will make sure that's firmly stuck down all around before I take my scissors and just trim off the overhang. So that's ready for the leaves to go on. And now my leaves are dry, I can work out where I want them to go. Um, I probably don't need all four. And I also want to add a metal embellishment. I've got these Tim Holtz embellishments. I'm just grabbing a few so I can choose. And I'm going to want the leaves to kind of fit in around this. So I'm going to place this on once I decide which one to go for. And that's going to help me place the leaves where I want them. So that's going to go across like so. And I think I can have one sprig of berries at the top, then the eucalyptus leaves, and then probably the other sprig at the bottom. So I'm going to start at the top. And again, I'm just dots of glue all over. And I'm using my reverse tweezers just to hang on to this while I place it. And then this eucalyptus leaf, same thing. But I kind of want the last of the leaves on here to sort of overhang a little bit over that embellishment. So I just need to work out the placement and make sure I don't stick down that very bottom leaf there like so. And then, yeah, as I thought, I won't have room for the other eucalyptus leaf, just this other sprig. And for this one, I can tuck the very top of it kind of underneath that metal embellishment. So it all looks quite seamless. So I'm quite happy with that. And I'm going to use my hot glue gun for this metal embellishment. So I just need to make sure that I tuck that little eucalyptus leaf over the top. And hold that down for a few minutes. 
So now I've put all my main elements on the front, I want to concentrate on the edges and I want to have some gold embossing powder all the way around the edges. So I've got my Versamark ink pad and I'm going to start on the top and this is just uh, gold embossing powder. And I'm going to make sure I cover not only the, the sort of front of the journal, but I want to cover the edges as well. So they've all got a nice gold edge. So I'm just going to melt that and then work my way around. Now I'll skip forward, but I'm going to do this all the way around the whole journal. So all of the edges, um, including the spine and for each panel. So I'll do all four sort of sides of the front panel, the middle and the back. So it's going to really have quite a lot of gold, but it, I, I think it's worth taking the time to do this because it really does give it a rich, luxurious look. You can go back on as I've done there and add more ink if you feel you haven't got enough powder on. And, um, you know, if you really want a luxurious look, you can also do it twice to, to really get a thick layer of embossing powder but I, I just did one layer all the way around and that gave me a lovely finish so I'll skip forward uh, to the end of this and we can see it with all of the gold embossing done. So I've got all the gold embossing on and you can see just as the light catches that quite how stunning it is and it really is worth the effort it does take a while to go all the way around the edges but uh, it's definitely worth it. And now I, the final touch is to just add some berries to those sprigs at the top and bottom. And I'm using white Nouveau drops for this. Now, some of these are quite close together. So I would recommend if you've got two berries right next to each other, just do one at this stage. Let that dry and then go back in a second time to add. Because if you put these Nouveau drops too close together, while they're wet they sometimes have a tendency to bleed together and you just end up with a big blob so it's worth just being careful and doing um one sort of set and then go back in and do do them once once the first layer is dried to add in a second berry if you need to so i'll just work my way all around and i will let this dry come back and do a second layer till i've got them all covered but i'll skip forward now and show you them all done so that's now dry and you can see the white berries just look lovely. Um, you could add a colour, but I, I think the white with all that lovely rich gold just really looks quite elegant and subtle. So that's the finished journal and you can see now on the close ups. Um, I've got two different journals here. Actually, you'll notice from the metal tags, um, one I'd done previously and then this is the one we've done today. So I thought I'd show you close ups of both because they're exactly the same design. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will put details in the description box below on YouTube for all the products I've used. So if you want to give this a go yourself, I'll, you'll find everything you need there. And hopefully I'll be back very soon with another video. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.